Hello, it's 2pm here, um, first day, uh, Sendai, uh, I don't actually know, Ioba Castle, I think, um, basically Date Castle, um, and I've just been to the gift shop, spent, uh, too much money, but I think, as I said, again, like, I think, to be honest, so far, like, I, I, as much as I love Pokemon and Shonen Jump, I think the, muse the museum shops that I've been to have actually been a lot better. Maybe it's because I've gone in with like, less expectations, um, but there was so much cool stuff there. <laughs> and I'm going to show off in a minute one of the things um, I got which, in a very me fashion. Um, but yeah, there was so much in there. Um, and yeah, as much as I kind of like the Poke Centre um, um, in here in Sendai and the one in Chiba they, they all they also felt a bit too small and I guess maybe a little bit more commercial um so and there was an element of I, I thought they were amazing but it was kind of I was almost expecting a bit more from like a proper like Pokemon store um if I compared to when I went to um I, I, don't, I can't remember I think it was ABC um in in one of the malls in Isamo um looking around there and all the Pokemon stuff they had there just in a small section um, that was that actually really impressed me, and probably arguably more than some of the Pokemon stores. Um, I, but again, I guess just because it wasn't it wasn't a Pokemon store, my expectations were a bit different. Um, but yeah, the museum stores I've been really impressed with, and I guess because it's a bit more like his like local history, and it's probably a little bit more like Japanese souvenirs essentially, right? whereas the Pokemon and the Shonen Jumps a little bit more different. Um, but I, I mean. Yeah, I mean, both stores are really good. I mean, the Shonen Jump store was good. It's just, it was just a heavy focus on Jujutsu Kaisen and then My Hero Academia, which I've seen bits of and I've liked, I've generally liked what I've seen, but like My Hero Academia, I've not got back into since I watched it um, in, I think it was 2018, I want to say, maybe, which is like five years ago, which is a frightening thought. But I, mean, I give that series some credit because it kind of got me back into anime and exploring different ones. Um, but, uh, yeah, and Jujutsu Kaisen, I've read a bit of the manga, manga, um, but I've not seen any of the show. I should do it at some point, because I think I actually probably would, would like it, um, but I'm busy with One Piece and all the Shaman King stuff, um, yeah. And I think Shaman King gets a bad rep for what, it, for how great it is, and I will quickly just divert and say, like, um, some of the stuff I was looking at recently in terms of, like, the Netflix adaption, um, I do agree that it was like rushed um, from what I've seen of it, but also at the same time, if it wasn't for that show, I wouldn't have got into Shaman King because I came across it on Netflix and I was like, oh, what's this? This looks pretty cool. Um, and I started watching it and that's what got me into Shaman King. Um, and I think, in my opinion, it's the best manga um, I've read. Um, maybe not the best anime, um, but definitely the best manga I've read best anime I've watched probably would have to go to One Piece at the moment um but yeah so without the Netflix adaption which a lot of people don't like for the pacing um I wouldn't become a fan of Shaman King so I, I don't want to criticize it really um and also I think it, it is obviously a bit more real it is a bit it's more faithful it's just the pacing's different um which I think in a way is kind of I'm not partly because we live in the 21st century now and people's attention spans are smaller um but i i also liked some of the stuff it did like in terms of the end credits and stuff um you know and the four i mean the four kids version back in 2003 2001 whenever it was that the first half of that was amazing but obviously once they lost the source material basically once they got to america <laughs> ironically once they arrived in america um that's when it went um sideways um but before that that was really good i think i think that actually probably had quite good pacing um but I can't fault the Netflix version. And they kept it faithful that a lot of the voice actors coming back from the original. So I think from a fan perspective, like, you know. But I do kind of agree. Like, I mean, I think... I think That's what I mean about the crows. I've said this before. I swear the crows here sound more human, in my opinion, <laughs> than in England. Because they're like, oh, like, it's just, yeah, like, high and no. They just sound, it's weird. Um, but yeah, yeah, I've gone off topic anyway, let me show you, um, <laughs> let me show you what I got from the, from the museum, uh, well, from the souvenir store.